So I wanted to do a quick study, a video study on our God-given human consciousness and how it accuses and exposes the sinner. Right now on my expository channel, we have just completed Romans 1 and have just begun our study in Romans 2. And a verse that has stuck out to me the most so far in chapter 2 has been verse 15. The verse reads, They show that the work of the law is written on their hearts, while their conscience also bears witness, and their conflicting thoughts accuse evil even excuse them. And the reason this verse stuck out to me was because recently, YouTube recommended a documentary to me on the history of the one percenter biker clubs, the gangs, whatever you want to call them, and the names of each biker club. It just screams Romans 2.15. So let me read to you some of the names of some of these clubs that throughout history have been the most popular. You know, going back to the beginning of the, the century. Okay, so we have the Hells Angels. We have the Chosen Few. We have this, the Devil's Disciples. We have the Diablos, the Grim Reapers, the Damned, Hell's Lovers, Satan's Demons, Original Red Devils, Sadistic Souls, Satan's Choice, Satan's Slaves, Sin City Disciples, Sons of Satan, Cursed and the Damned, the Lost, and so on. You get the point. Romans 2.15, they show that the law of God is written on their hearts. So often you hear people talking about how good they are or that what they've done has been so good or it's just nothing but self-righteousness. But inherently, we know that we are wicked. That's why in regards to true repentance, it's an acknowledgement that what the Bible says about us is true. In many cases, there is sometimes more hope for the biker in regards to salvation than there is for the run-of-the-mill, quote-unquote, good guy who obeys the laws. And that's because the biker has already acknowledged that they're evil and bad. They're rebels. They boast in it. So I just thought that this was interesting, how it, if we pay attention, you can see the influence of Satan stamped all over this world. Now, we've all been witnessing uh, civil disobedience, um, a developing culture of people who have no sense of responsibility to anybody, no sense of submission to authority. Uh, we see a whole generation of people who don't know what a father is, and, and a father is the primary authority figure in the life of a child. There, there, is a, there is a rebel spirit that is unleashed in our culture, and it's pervasive in our society. And so those who are in authority uh, are assaulted and attacked it's even in politics, it's the politics of destruction. It's uh, how fast and how thoroughly can you destroy someone who might be a position, in a position of authority. In the home, it's um, complete disregard for parents. In the school, it's disregard for the teachers. And it shows up most dramatically in this attitude that exists toward the police. Well, what does the Bible say about that? The Bible says that we are to submit to everyone who is over us because they have been placed there by God. The powers that be are ordained of God. That doesn't mean they're perfect, but they are ordained of God. And they're ordained of God to punish evildoers and protect those who do good. That's what the Bible says. We are to honor the king and we are to honor all who are in authority over us. Now, remember, that was said by the Apostle Paul in a time when the Roman government was corrupt to the core and ruled by Caesars, who were immoral, murderous beings. There wasn't the kind of justice that we even know today, but we are still to submit. We are to live, says the New Testament, quiet, peaceable lives so that people can look at us and see our obedience to God, even in the way we act toward the civil authorities. 